Hi everyone, welcome to this lesson where today we're talking about special products. So special products are all about some shortcuts that we can use when we're multiplying specific polynomial expressions together. So these are shortcuts where I always explain to my students, I'm going to show you how to use the shortcut, but also remind you, hey, if you don't have the shortcut memorized and you're not seeing the patterns, which everything is about patterns in this lesson, then you can always do it the formal way that we did in our previous lesson where you're just uh, you know, distributing and combining like terms. So we're going to learn today what it means to find the square of a sum, the square of a difference, and then the product of a sum and a difference. So first we're going to look at square of a sum. So squaring a sum means to take a sum and raise it to the second power. So if I said to you do a plus b and square it, well we should remember that Squaring something means to multiply it by itself. So a plus b squared means a plus b times a plus b. And then I would say to you, okay, well then let's, you know, distribute. So a times a, a times b. So a times a is a squared. A times b is a b. Then we go ahead and distribute the b to everything in the second polynomial. So b times a is also a b. And then b times b is b squared. And then I would say, okay, well, combine like terms, right? So 1ab plus another ab would be 2ab. And now what I need to show you here is I could technically just do this last step. I could go directly from this problem to this answer without having to do my distribution. And this is the process. Whatever your a value is of your polynomial, your first result is going to be a squared. So you're going to take this first term in this binomial and square it. And that's the first part of your answer. Whatever b is, you're going to square it, and that's always going to be the last term in your trinomial answer. The middle term, 2ab, comes from multiplying these two together and then doubling it. Okay, so if I multiply a and b together and then I multiply it by 2, that's my middle result. So I'm going to show you how we can now apply that to the sum of x plus 5 and then squaring it. Now I'm going to show you the, the drawn out version just to remind you that, hey, when you, you know, when you do x plus 5 and you square it, that really means to do x plus 5 times x plus 5. And then, of course, that means we distribute the x twice. So x times x is x squared. x times 5 is 5x. And then I would do 5 times x and then 5 times 5. So 5 times x is another 5x, 5 times 5 is 25. Combine my middle terms, and I get x squared plus 10x plus 25. But look what I mentioned before. The first term, you just take x and you square it. And look, that's the first term of my answer. The last term, you take the 5 and you square it, and that's where the 25 comes from. The middle term, 10x, that comes from multiplying these two together. Think about it. What's x times 5? It's 5x. And then you double it. 5x doubled is 10x. And so I could actually just jump to that trinomial answer without doing all of my distributing if I can understand these patterns. So then this one here. If I follow that order, a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So the, I'm going to just go right to the trinomial answer. So I square the first term. So 2x squared would be 4x squared, right? Because you got to think, what's 2x times 2x? So it's 4x squared. The middle term I get by multiplying these two together. So 2x times 3 is 6x, and then you double it, which is 12x. And then you square the last term. And if I square a 3, I get 9. Now, if I wrote all this out and did 2x plus 3 times 2x plus 3 and distribute it and combine like terms, that's the trinomial that I would get. Now, we go ahead and we follow that same pattern now for a minus b squared. So if I follow the same situation and I go ahead and I distribute and I combine my like terms, look what I end up getting. I end up getting something really similar to the sum, except the only difference is when there is a minus sign here, you're doing a difference then your middle term is always negative. Your last term, your final term, is always positive because that's the value from something squared. And anytime you square any number, you're always getting a positive result. But the middle term becomes negative. So here's what, how this looks. If I did x minus 5 squared, 
I could write out all the work, distribute it, and combine my like terms, or I could say to myself, okay, look, you square the first value to get the first term in the answer. You square the last value to get the third term in your answer. And then you multiply these two together, x times negative 5, which is negative 5x, and you double it. And if I double negative 5x, that's where the negative 10x comes from. So if I follow this pattern then, x minus 8 squared. So I square the first term, I get x squared. I multiply x times negative 8, and then I double it. So x times negative 8 is negative 8x. Double it, I get negative 16x. And then I square the last term. 8 squared is 64. And sometimes my students will ask me, well, what am I squaring at the end, the 8 or the negative 8? You're in luck. It doesn't matter because 8 squared is 64. Negative 8 squared is also 64. Uh, square the first term, x squared. Multiply x times negative 3, so negative 3x. Double it. It's negative 6x. And then you square the 3. That's 9. Square the first term, 2x to the second is 4x squared. Multiply these two terms together, you get negative 6x. Double it, you get negative 12x. Square the last term, you get positive 9. Square the first term, so 5x and then raised to the second power would be 25x squared. Multiply these two terms together, you get negative 5x. Double it, you get negative 10x. Square the last term, plus 1. Notice it's always ending with plus. Square the first term. So 3x squared squared. So you square the 3, so that's 9. You square the x squared, so that's x to the fourth. Multiply these two together, you would get negative 21x squared. Double it, you get negative 42x squared. And then square your last term, plus 49. Last tab. Uh, product of a sum and a difference. So I'm going to show you what really cool situation happens here. This is by far my favorite. So if I go to distribute, a times a is a squared, a times negative b is negative ab. Then I go ahead and distribute b times a and then b times negative b. So b times a is positive ab, b times negative b is negative b squared. And now notice here a negative ab and a positive ab, they're opposites. And when you combine them, they simplify each other out. So the result of this is just a squared minus b squared, which is pretty cool. So look at that. I don't have to do all of this distributing. Let me make the connection. So what I'm really doing here is a times a gets me a squared, right? And then b times negative b gets me this answer here. Okay, it's always going to be a minus at the end. So you square the first term, square the second term, and it's always a diff the difference. So x plus 3 times x minus 3, if I distributed it out, I'm going to just be left with x squared minus 9. So now following that pattern, I bet we can answer these so fast. So x plus 5, x minus 5 would be x squared minus 25. x plus 6, x minus 6 would be x squared minus 36 x plus 3, x minus 3, we saw that previously. That one would be x squared minus 9. x minus 1, x plus 1 would be x squared minus 1. So remember, you multiply the first two terms together, multiply the second two terms together, and then it's always minus in between. So 2x times 2x is 4x squared. 5 times negative 5 is negative 25. 6x times 6x is 36x squared. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. 5x times 5x is 25x squared. 4y times negative 4y is negative 16y squared. 3x squared times 3x squared is 9x to the fourth. 2y times negative 2y is negative 4y squared. Pretty cool. Okay, so a problem like this is going to ask us to find the area of the shaded region. So I've got this kind of crazy looking diagram here, but let me explain. So you've got this outside big square, and I know it's a square because I've got four congruent sides. I've got my 90 degrees. I see the side lengths are the same. So 3x plus 5 by 3x plus 5. Then within the big square, I have this rectangle with a length of x plus 8 and a width of x minus 8. So I know it's not a square because those are obviously not the same. And then in the very center, I've got a shaded square of x minus 3, x minus 3. 
So if I wanted to find the area of just the shaded region, so basically like imagine this was grass, the shaded area was grass, and then you have a concrete patio. And then in the middle of the concrete patio, you put a little square of grass in the middle. If I said to you the shaded region was just the grassy area, that's what we would calculate. So we'd wanna find the area of the whole entire big square first. Then we wanna subtract out the rectangles area. And then we wanna add back in the little square. So the big square, the area would be three plus five, uh, three X plus five squared, right? Because the area formula for a square is uh, side squared. Then we need to subtract that by the area of my rectangle. So the uh, length times width of the rectangle would be X plus eight, X minus eight. And then we need to add the area of the little square. And so again, formula for a square is just side squared. So now I can apply these special product rules. So 3x plus 5 squared, square of a sum. You square the first term, you get 9x squared. You multiply 3x times 5 and you double it. So 3x times 5 is 15. 15 doubled is 30, so it's 30x. And then you square the last term. 5 squared is 25. Now, this is a perf uh, a sum and a difference and that's like the last scenario that we saw so to do x plus 8 times x minus 8 it's just going to be x squared minus 64. remember you do x times x is x squared 8 times negative 8 is negative 64. now i put the whole answer in brackets there because i need to make sure i subtract the entire area and i just don't minus the x squared and then add the 64 I'm sorry, subtract 64. I have to make sure I subtract the entire amount. So brackets or parentheses are very important. And then um, square of a difference, which is just like square of the sum from before. Let me zoom in a little bit more here. And so I do this last step like I did the beginning step. So I square the first term, it's x squared. I multiply x times negative three, I get negative three x, and then you double it. Negative three x doubled would be negative six x and then I square the three at the end, so it's plus nine. So now what I'm really doing is nine X squared plus 30 X plus 25. Now let me distribute this negative. So I'm gonna do subtract X squared, and then look at this, subtracting a negative 64 really means to add 64, and then I'm bringing everything else down. So now we just need to clean this up. So nine X squared and a negative X squared and a positive X squared well, that simplifies out to just 9x squared. Now let me look at my x's. So 30x and then negative 6x, that's going to combine to give me 24x. And then I have my constants. So 25 plus 64, let's see, that's 89. 89 plus 9 is 98, and I label it units squared. Pretty cool. This last one, area of the shaded region. So this is a big square and a little square. So that's what I'm doing. I'm gonna do the area of the big square and then subtract the area of the little square. So area of the big square is X plus seven squared. And then area of the little square is X minus two squared. So this is a square of a sum and then square of a difference. So if I square this sum, I square the first term it's X squared. I multiply x times seven and I double it to get 14x. I square the last term to get 49. Minus, now I'm gonna do open brackets because the same thing happens in, from the previous problem. I have to make sure I carefully then subtract the entire area. And the only way to do that is to put everything in parentheses. So subtract the first term, x, I'm sorry, square the first term, x squared. x times negative two is negative two x and then double it so it's negative four x and then square the last term plus four. So now my first trinomial is great, and now I just need to distribute this minus. So I'm subtracting x squared. Now, when I, you subtract a negative four x, you really get plus four x, and then I'm subtracting that four. Final step, notice your x squareds here, positive x squared, negative x squared, those are gone. So it's really just 14 x plus four x, which is 18 x and then 49 minus four, which is 45. And so it's 18x plus 45 units squared. That's it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Bye.